It's a pretty big night, actually. It's the um, first time that I've been left in charge of the little one. And, gee, I won't lie to you. I, I thought it was going to be easy, but the tears, the just, the crying is non-stop. I can't do it. <laughs> I had the feeding schedule all written down and I was following it to a T and things are going really well, but what I didn't allow for, like, I knew there was going to be diaper changes, but that many? And, and the thing I really didn't account for was how can something so small soil so many clothes? And when you have all these soiled clothes, that just means endless cycles of, of washing. Like, how can this one little thing make all this washing in one night? It just made the world that I was living in feel like it wasn't even real. For me, when, when I get stressed and, and I get anxious, I just, I need to go to my happy place. And for me, that's, that's looking up at the stars. And tonight, it just, it's not my fault. I just needed, I just needed a minute. Hey, what's up? Hope you enjoyed that silly little sketch there. I just, I wanted to make something fun and a little bit silly because I just got these two new lights and I haven't been this excited for new lights in quite a long time. So I wanted to make something that I could kind of show off some of these scenarios where these lights excel. Both these lights are from Neon Lights Parvo Slim range. We've got the 120C and the 60CL. Now they do a bicolor variant, or as these ones are, the full RGBWW variant. They are 120 and 60 watts respectively. Now just noting the 60CL is the longer slimmer brother to the 60C, which is more of a square light. For me personally, and the way I envisage using these lights, I think the longer slimmer light is gonna be more beneficial to me. Anyway, these super slim lights are full RGB and bicolor capable. They also come with a new external power supply that clips onto stands via a new super clamp slash V-mount clip sort of thing. Fantastic design. The V-mount powerable and also the 60CL, you can actually clip in some Sony MPF style batteries, which is chef's kiss. They're also Bluetooth controllable via the NAND link app, which is fantastic because now all my lights can be controlled at the click of a button. We get all the effects modes that we're used to in Nanlite -like products like explosions, TV flicker, bad bulbs, fireworks, campfire, candlelight, all that sort of stuff. But to me, my favorite feature about these lights is that you can have such a slim profile, a pop-out softbox and a grid all in the space of about that, which is absolutely fantastic. And if you know me, you know that I love a good grid, I like to control exactly where my lights go. So that's a big tick for me. But for all the light nerds that want to know all the numbers and all that, here they are, they're on screen. Uh, so pause it, read it, and otherwise, carry on. For the most part, these lights have pretty much everything you need, but who are they even for? The way I see it, these lights are a fantastic for anyone doing this. Doing self-takes, whether that's YouTube, you might be an actor, just general content creator. Absolutely fantastic for that. But second of all, I think they're gonna be fantastic for interview setups. If you're a solo operator and you're looking for a two or three light setup to shoot interviews and testimonials with, you can get a bunch of these, they won't break the bank, and they give you lots of flexibility in terms of what you can do because you do have that full RGB as well as that bicolor functionality. I think these will be absolutely fantastic on indie film sets, and the way that I personally plan to use these, I do think I'll use them standalone a bit, but mainly, I think there'll be a bit of a synergy that will integrate well with all my different Forza products. So hopefully by watching this video and seeing how I use them and utilize them in different scenarios, you'll be able to work out if these are good for you or not. So let's go ahead and break down that simple little sketch that I made before and show you how I utilize these lights in that film. First off was the interview portion. Now this is a super simple setup and I'm gonna let Jed in the interview tell you all about it. Thanks for that, mate. Now, here we are in the interview scene. So, oh, sorry, buddy. <laughs> We've got our 120C, which is elevated and off to one side with that grid, which is giving us direct light exactly where we want, so it's not spilling everywhere else. But it's also giving us, because it's elevated, it's giving us those longer shadows over the eyelids, a little bit more of a dramatic tone, I suppose. Now, off to the back, we have our 60CL. This is acting as a hair light or an edge light, just giving a little bit of separation from the back. And you notice it's kind of angling forward. Once again, we want to isolate the subject and we don't want to spill too much into the background because in the background, we have a bunch of practicals. We've got some parvo tubes and a bunch of other things just hanging around in the back, doing their thing, adding a little bit of spice. Now for the camera nerds, we've got the Sony FX6 with a 35mm G Master. And then for audio, we have a, uh, a Rode NTG3 running into a Zoom F3 recorder. And I suppose I did actually have the, uh, 
The B cam, I'm not sure if I cut to it all yet, but I did have an A7S3 with a 50 mil G Master on there as well. So that is the interview setup and uh, let's cross back to the studio. Next was the DIY snoring cam and the diaper changing scene. This one was easy. I had the big boy, the 120C, corner of the room, just bouncing to the walls, giving a nice even feel everywhere we went. Strap the tripod to the chest, mount the camera, the 14mm G Master, and you know, Bob's your uncle at that point. I did have Rosie shoot me with a syringe to, to mimic some baby urination. <laughs> then we move across to the washing machine shot, and for this one, let's throw it back to the washing machine. Mounting the camera inside the dryer wasn't too hard, it just took a bit of faffing about. So I got a monopod and I jammed it between both ends of the dryer, zip tied it to the back through the little cheese grater that we've got there, and then just used a bunch of Kupo super clamps and magic arms to hold this guy in place. So once we have that set up, it was time to set up the light. So up top, we've got the 60CL, double layer of diffusion and a grid to focus that light down here. Then just off to the side of frame, we've got the 120C, single layer of diffusion and no grid. So we just get a nice soft spill kind of everywhere else. I've got the 60CL mounted to the door via a Kupo supervisor clamp. You might've heard of these called a Cardellini clamp. They are super handy. And if you don't have one in your kit, you should definitely pick one up. Anyway, I need to film this scene again with some natural lighting so it makes sense in the story. Finally, there's the shot in the car. So let's send it over to outside jet. Now for the fake moonlight, I figured instead of doing it in the driveway where all the neighbors are gonna be poking their heads out going, what's he doing with fancy lights? I figured let's take it into an environment where we can control absolutely everything. So that's what we've done. We've come into the garage where we can kill the house lights and have total control. This is actually a super simple shot. Now what we've done, we've got a Kupo Kupo going edge to edge in the garage. And that's how we're hanging the Parvo Slim 120C. Now this is shining through our moonroof, sunroof situation in this car. We're pretty fortunate this has got a really big glass roof so it's easy to, to punch that light through. You'll notice as well, we've got the grid on. I love a good grid because it's angling just where I want. I don't want to feel too much over the scene because we're trying to pretend like it's moonlight. We're not trying to light the whole world, right? So right now we've got the ballast up here. We're running at 43%, 228 for the hue and 37% saturation. So we're running a quite a subdued light. We're not trying to be full RGB party, but we're just trying to give a little bit of an indication that this might be some moonlight and not, you know, something else. So if we kill those house lights, boom, that is our, our fake moon right there. Just very subtle, but it's given us exactly what we need just to pretend like we might be outside. These lights have come in so clutch and I'm very much looking forward to these becoming a staple in my kit. If you've subscribed and followed for a while, then you'd notice that things are starting to look a little bit different. I've painted some walls, I've hung some photos, but I'm still in a constant state of remodeling this room so it can eventually become a 360 degree, just sit down, turn on the camera and turn on the light sort of situation. Once that is eventuated, these lights are going to become my new YouTube studio lights and just be set up almost at all times. So if you want to see what that eventuates to be, A, subscribe, but also follow me on Instagram because I will no doubt be doing some reels showing you what that looks like when it finally gets done. Anyway, thanks so much for watching this video. I hope that if you're thinking about buying one of these lights through seeing how I've utilized them, you can either go, I'm all in or I'm all out. I hope I haven't left you sitting on a fence. Anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe, all that fun stuff. Go listen to nothing but these and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Back and I'm better than ever wow. I think I got a vendetta Oh now they call me, I seen her yeah. All of those times getting severed